Let's put your hands together for Mr. Tony Carr. How you guys doing? Woo! All right, I'm Spiegel. Nice. All right, what do you guys think of these jeans? Ow! Woo! Baby Gap, $11. <laughs> You know, they have big and tall stores, right? Why don't they have short and scrawny stores? It's real hard for me to feel good about the, you know, shopping in the kids' department. So I put it off, and I put it off. Eventually I go, trying some stuff on, think I look good, until I notice I have a Winnie the Pooh over here on the side of my shirt. You know what's worse than shopping for regular clothes? Shopping for a suit. You guys are wearing kids' suits and not all the pockets are real. <laughs> why would they do that? I'll tell you why. So when I'm on a date and the girl's like, hey, can you carry my lipstick and keys? I have to say no and guarantee I'm not going to get laid. I have come up with a solution. I always carry my Tigger backpack. <laughs> So I do date a girl that's a little bit younger than me. Sometimes that causes a problem for us. On the weekends, I want to lay around and watch a DVD. She wants to play with her dollies in color. I love uncomfortable laughter. She's also five inches taller than me. It's ridiculous, but I would never get rid of her. I never know when I'm gonna eat something off the top shelf. <laughs> and when we go out, she wears four inch heels. What kind of sick, angry bitch wants to be nine inches taller than her date? <laughs> we'll be out and she'll be like, you never look in my eyes. You're staring at my tits. I'm not staring at her tits, I'm trying to look over her tits to see her damn eyes. <laughs> So I recently got engaged. Thank you. I had my girl take, uh, we took a compatibility test to make sure we were going to be together forever. Have you guys heard about these? Pregnancy tests? She failed. We're engaged now. <laughs> so, I have a daughter now. Um, she's 16 months now. She has more clothes than me and my fiance combined. Every time my girl leaves the house, she comes home with little dresses, bows, shoes, socks, just every little cute thing you can strap to my daughter we have. Every time she leaves the house. Now, when I go out shopping, you know, I come home with t-shirts, jeans, you know, practical clothes. You know, I dress her like a little tomboy. My girl's like, you can't do that. We're going to end up with a little lesbian on our hands. I said, well, we'll have a common interest. <laughs> And I figure, by the time she's 12, I'm going to start getting her hand-me-downs. <laughs> Gotta be practical, am I right? So. so, comedy's not paying the bills. I do have a real job. Anybody want to guess what I do for a living? I'm not a UFC fighter. I don't stand on top of wedding cakes. I'm a security guard. No shit, I'm not even making this up. My best friend got me the job. Let me tell you about my best friend. He's a martial arts instructor. He owns his own karate school. He's a former Marine that's been through two wars. And he's a Cook County cop, which makes him a legal racist. And he works security as well. When he's doing security, he's hoping there's a problem. He wants somebody to break in so he can use his skills. I'm a 110 pound comic. 
What am I gonna do if someone breaks in? Tell them dick jokes and tickle them until they leave? <laughs> Just a little side note, when I, I used to tell that joke, I used to say I was a 120 pound comic, and people used to argue with me in the middle of the joke. <laughs> fucked up, right? <laughs> so, anybody care about the Tiger Woods scandal? No? It's like big news for a while, right? The Tiger Woods scandal, I didn't really care about it, but I'm a comic, I figured, hey, maybe I should do some current events, so I was trying to write jokes as the scandal came out, which was a problem because it changed like every four hours. So I stopped when he got to nine girlfriends. You guys want to hear the last joke I wrote about Tiger Woods? Yeah. All right. So nine girls have come out and said they've had sex with Tiger Woods. Have you seen these girls? Have you heard interviews with these girls? Talk about a rough 18 holes. <laughs> The front nine was a breeze, but the back nine was rough. That's a mathematical anal sex joke. You're not getting that on the Tonight Show. Is there anybody here on a blind date? Don't go on blind dates. Last time I was on a blind date, the girl was so ugly I took my contacts out before I slept with her. It's better than dating the blind. They're so needy. <laughs> oh man, if you didn't like that part of the joke, hang on. <laughs> They're always asking so many dumb questions. Do I look nice? How's my hair? How's my makeup? Where are we? <laughs> Is there another girl here? Is that my sister? <laughs> And so the first time I told that joke, it was in a packed comedy club. And there was a birthday party going on for a blind girl. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I got heckled by a blind girl. She wasn't facing the right direction, but that shit still hurt. <laughs> so I talked to her after the show, I'm like, you're in a comedy club. Don't you see why it's funny? You're looking at this all wrong. Can't you see it from my point of view? She fires back at me with, don't worry, I don't let the little shit bother me. <laughs> Funny, right? So I asked her out, we went out a couple times. Well, I didn't take her out. My friend took her out, but she thought it was me. I couldn't take her out. Her hair was a mess. Her makeup was all crazy. Her sister was a snob. It wasn't gonna work out. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I'm going to end on this one here. Um, do you guys read the paper on this uh, last Sunday that uh, a guy had to have surgery to have a pager removed from his hindquarters? Did you guys hear about this? He put a pager in his ass, he'd call it, it'd vibrate, and that's how he masturbated. Ah. This guy's got some problems, am I right? <laughs> am I right? Yeah. I mean, who the hell still has a pager? <laughs> There's an app for that. All right, guys, we need to get the host up here. Thank you very much.